Thea, who was 19 years old at the time, was a bright young woman who lived in a sleepy coastal town in Australia. Her interest in the natural world began at a young age, and she used most of her spare time to travel through uncharted territories. One bright and sunny afternoon, Thea convinced her father, Vincent, to accompany her on a fishing trip to a nearby river. Excited for the upcoming adventure, she packed their fishing gear before they embarked on their outing. Thea's excitement could be seen in her eyes as they approached the picturesque river. The river was well known for its rich ecosystem, which included the possibility of occasionally coming across crocodiles. Despite this, Thea and Vincent did not appear to be overly concerned. They were familiar with crocodile encounters through the accounts of others, but they had never had one of their own. Thea lowered her fishing line into the water and awaited the first sign of a bite with anxious anticipation. Vincent made himself comfortable nearby and began closely monitoring his daughter. It was the kind of day ideal for spending time outside, thanks to the calm atmosphere and the light breeze. Thea experienced a sense of calm due to being immersed in nature's splendor. They had no idea that just below the placid surface of the river was a dangerous environment waiting for them. When Thea started to bring in her line, a massive crocodile came slowly and silently out of the water. It had been attracted to the movement of the bait. Thea was only in its path for a fraction of a second when the vicious animal lunged at her and closed its powerful jaws around her leg. As Thea endured the excruciating pain and unrelenting pressure of the crocodile's bite, her world began disintegrating. Her terrified shrieks ripped through the peaceful atmosphere like a knife through butter. After being startled by the commotion, Vincent immediately took action. He fought the crocodile with all his strength as he desperately tried to save his daughter from being eaten. The battle that took place between Vincent and the crocodile was a vicious and tense one. Vincent attempted to pry the predator's jaws open by punching and kicking it as it stood before him. As the severity of Thea's wounds increased with each passing second, blood began to stain the water. Because it was driven by instinct and hunger, the crocodile would not let go of its prey. Vincent reached for his fishing knife in a brave act of desperation during a dangerous situation. With lightning speed, he thrust the blade into the crocodile's eye, and the reptile was momentarily dislodged from its hold. Vincent grabbed the chance to save Thea's life by removing her from the creature's deadly embrace and dragging her toward the safety of the riverbank. Thea's vision became hazy, and her body weakened due to the shock and blood loss. The force of the crocodile's bite had shattered and mangled her leg, causing it to hang limp. As Vincent cradled his injured daughter and frantically shouted for help, his heart broke into a million pieces. Thankfully, a group of nearby fishermen heard the commotion and rushed to help them when they saw what was happening. They acted quickly to contact emergency services and provided first aid to Thea. While waiting for help, they did their best to stabilize Thea's condition. Thea was transported by helicopter to the closest hospital, where highly trained physicians and nurses worked frantically to save her life. Thea's youthful spirit persisted, even though the severity of her wounds was significant. She was subjected to some operations and had to endure countless rehabilitation and physical therapy hours. Thea's strength returned to her gradually over a few months. Her injuries had left physical and emotional scars that would never heal, yet her spirit remained unbroken. She embarked on a path toward recovery and resiliency with the help of her loving family, friends, and the community at large. Many people found motivation in Thea's story of surviving an encounter with a wild animal, which helped shed light on the significance of showing proper reverence for the natural world. Through her experience, she advocated for more responsible behavior in wildlife habitats and worked to increase awareness about crocodile safety. Thea's eyes shone with resolve as she stood before the crowd and recounted the harrowing events that had occurred to her. She had been close to passing away, so she emerged with a heightened appreciation for life. Her leg was covered with scars, which constantly reminded her of her determination and the power of the human spirit to overcome difficult circumstances. 
Nirved was a 42-year-old man from Sri Lanka who lived with his wife and three children in a small village near a large lake. He was a fisherman by trade and spent most of his days on the water trying to catch enough fish to provide for his family. Despite the danger of fishing in the lake, Nirved never thought twice about risking his life to provide for his loved ones. One day, Nirved was fishing in his small wooden boat, as he had done many times before. He had been out on the lake for several hours, patiently waiting for a good catch, when he felt a sudden tug on his fishing line. Excited at the prospect of a big catch, he quickly began to reel in his line. As he pulled the line closer to the boat, Nervid suddenly felt a sharp pain on the back of his head. He saw a massive crocodile, its jaws clamped tightly around his head. Panic set in as he realized he was being attacked by one of the most dangerous predators in the lake. He screamed for help, but the other fishermen were too far away to hear him. The crocodile easily dragged him down to the boat, brutally attacking him by shaking his head and whole body and biting him violently. Nerved could feel his head getting crushed soon, but he knew he had to fight to save his life. Nerved fought desperately to free himself from the crocodile's grip, but it was useless. The creature was too strong, and its jaws were too powerful. He began to lose consciousness, and he knew he would die. But then, something miraculous happened. A group of fishermen fishing nearby heard Nerved's screams and rushed to help. Using their boats, they surrounded the crocodile and beat it with their oars. The creature finally released Nerved's head and swam away, leaving him bleeding and unconscious in his boat. The fishermen quickly brought Nerved to shore and called for an ambulance. He was rushed to the hospital where doctors worked tirelessly to save his life. Despite the severity of his injuries, Nervid managed to pull through, and he eventually regained consciousness. Nervid's family was overjoyed to hear that he had survived the attack. They rushed to the hospital to be by his side, and never left him alone for a moment during his recovery. Over the next several weeks, Nervid slowly began to heal from his injuries. His head was badly scarred from the crocodile's bite but he was alive and that was all that mattered. As Nervid recovered, he began to think about the fishermen who had saved his life. He was grateful for their bravery and heroism, and he knew he could never thank them enough. So he decided to do something special for them. With the help of his family, Nervid organized a feast for the fishermen. He invited all of them to his home and cooked a huge meal, including his signature fried fish dish. The fishermen were touched by Nervid's gesture, and they shared stories of their own near-death experiences on the lake. Ultimately, Nervid realized that he had been given a second chance at life. He knew that he would never forget the harrowing experience of being attacked by a crocodile, but he was grateful for the love and support of his family and friends. And most of all, he was thankful for the fishermen who had risked their own lives to save his. Bastian and Ruby were married for almost 15 years. They met at a motorcycle club since they love motorcycling and traveling around. They resigned from the motorcycle club when they married, but their passion and love for their hobby remained as a couple. Due to their love for motorcycling, their children also developed a passion for it and joined motorcycle clubs to share their love with others who were the same. Bastian and Ruby couldn't get any happier seeing their children have the same passion as them. On their free days, the couple would go on motorbike adventures together and spend a few days alone. In this way, they can relive their old memories when they were younger and still in the motorcycle club they were once in. Today, the couple plan a motorbike tour on Lawn Hill in Australia. The city was just a few kilometers away from their home the perfect place to set up a quick tour and unwind from everything. As they were motorcycling along the fascinating city of Long Hill, they passed a camping park and a famous swimming zone for some locals and even tourists. It also has waterfalls, a well-known trademark of the place, to attract many visitors. The couple decided to relax and quickly swim at the place as they parked their motorbikes before entering. They were greeted by the relaxing view of the swimming holes in the place, 
and it was not long until they'd gone swimming in the area. Bastian and Ruby were always motorcycling, but they never encountered something like this in their years of touring together. They may have stopped on the road to take breaks, but this is by far the most relaxing break they'd had together. Ruby suddenly discovered a small waterfall just a few feet away, and they decided to swim behind it. After swimming behind the waterfall, the couple sat at the shore and rested briefly before swimming again. After a couple of minutes, Bastion decided to swim again in the waters, while Ruby refused and insisted that she just wanted to sit down and watch him swim. Bastion agreed as he swam again and enjoyed himself while his wife watched him. They were having the time of their lives when suddenly Bastion mysteriously disappeared into the water, leaving Ruby confused. Ruby stood up from the ground and approached the water to check on her husband until Bastion emerged from the water again, but he was screaming for help this time. Bastion desperately screams that a crocodile just slashed onto his legs and dragged him underwater, shocking Ruby. Not long after, the crocodile finally emerged from the water to attack Bastion from the back, causing him to scream in pain. Bastion needed Ruby's help, since the crocodile was not showing signs of stopping until it had successfully devoured him. Ruby, who's determined to save her husband, plunges herself into the water to try and fight the crocodile by herself. As she reaches the crocodile and her husband, she tries to wrestle the animal with her bare hands by punching its face and eyes. Still getting bitten on his arms, shoulders, and back, Bastion tries to help Ruby fight the crocodile with his hands. The two fought the crocodile until it decided to free Bastion and swim away from them. Ruby then carries her husband to the shore, only to see that her husband is heavily wounded and injured. With the help of some concerned tourists who passed them, Bastion was carried and then taken to a nearby hospital for treatment. The management of the camping park demanded to search for the crocodile to euthanize it and prevent future accidents like these. Swimming in a lake is one of the most recommended things to do to cool down in the summer. This activity can be made more special when spending it with some loved ones, especially the family. In this story, a family goes to the lake for the same reason, to cool down and relax. However, who would have thought their little family bonding would be the most gruesome they'll ever have? The sun was setting over the tranquil lake, casting a warm golden glow over the water's surface. The Smith family had arrived earlier that day to spend a relaxing weekend in a cabin by the lake. The weather was hot, and the family decided to cool off by dipping in the lake. They had no idea that their innocent swim would soon become a fight for survival. As the family waded into the cool water, they could feel their muscles relax and their worries drift away. The children splashed around, laughing and playing, while the parents took in the lake's serene beauty. Suddenly, a ripple in the water caught their attention, and they froze. At first, they thought it was just a large fish, but then they saw the telltale eyes of a crocodile staring back at them. The crocodile lunged at the family, its powerful jaws snapping shut just inches away from the youngest child. The family's screams echoed across the lake as they scrambled to escape the water. The crocodile, angered by its missed opportunity, circled the family, waiting for another chance to strike. The family had heard of crocodile attacks before, but they never imagined that they would be the ones to experience one. They knew they had to act fast if they wanted to survive. They quickly swam towards the shore, trying to distance themselves from the crocodile as much as possible. But the crocodile wasn't giving up easily. It continued to pursue them, its eyes locked on its prey. The family reached the shore and scrambled up onto the rocky outcropping. They huddled together, their hearts racing, watching the crocodile circle below. The family knew they couldn't stay on the rocks forever. They had to find a way to get to safety, but they also had to be careful not to give the crocodile another chance to attack. They searched the area for any signs of help, but the lake was deserted and no one was around to come to their aid. It seemed like they were trapped with no way out. The children were terrified, 
and the parents tried to keep them calm. Suddenly, the father had an idea. He remembered hearing about a technique to scare off crocodiles by splashing water in their eyes. It was a long shot, but it was their only hope. The father grabbed a large bucket lying nearby and filled it with water. He stood at the edge of the rocks, waiting for the crocodile to come into range. The father splashed the water in its eyes and the crocodile got close enough. The crocodile recoiled in surprise, its eyes stinging from the water. The family saw their chance and made a run for it. They ran as fast as they could, not looking back until they were out of sight of the lake. They collapsed on the ground, panting and exhausted, but relieved to be alive. The family made it back to the cabin, shaken but unharmed. They reported the attack to the authorities, who promptly set out to capture the crocodile. It was eventually caught and removed from the lake, and the family could return to the lake for the rest of their trip. The family never forgot the terror they experienced that day, but they also never forgot the bravery and quick thinking that saved their lives. They learned a valuable lesson about the dangers of swimming in unfamiliar waters and the importance of keeping a cool head in a crisis. They returned home with a newfound respect for the power of nature and the fragility of life and a deep appreciation for the love and strength of the family. Fletcher was a college wrestler in Australia, known for his impressive strength and agility on the mat. He was also an avid adventurer and loved to explore the rugged Australian wilderness in his free time. Despite being a wrestler and looking fierce all the time, he's actually a sweet guy who cares about everyone around him, especially his family and friends. One summer day, Fletcher and his friends decided to swim in a remote river they had never visited. Fletcher told them they should relax and enjoy their remaining summer days while they last. They set up a large picnic mat and a barbecue beside the river with a cooler of drinks to enjoy the day by having fun with each other. They were enjoying the cool water and laughing as they splashed around, unaware of the danger lurking beneath the surface. Suddenly, Fletcher felt a sharp pain in his leg and was dragged underwater. His friends screamed in terror as they watched him disappear beneath the surface. But Fletcher knew exactly what was happening. He was being attacked by a crocodile. Fletcher had grown up in Australia and knew all about the dangers of crocodiles. He had even learned some techniques for wrestling them if necessary, but he never imagined he would have to use them in a real life situation. The crocodile thrashed and twisted, trying to drag Fletcher deeper into the water. But Fletcher was a skilled wrestler and managed to wrap his arms around the creature's neck, using his powerful muscles to keep it from closing its jaws around him. The crocodile was no match for Fletcher's strength, but it was still a dangerous adversary. It thrashed and snapped, trying to break Fletcher's grip and inflict as much damage as possible. Fletcher's friends were paralyzed with fear, not knowing what to do to help, but Fletcher was in his element using all his wrestling skills to keep the crocodile at bay. For hours, Fletcher and the crocodile battled in the water. Fletcher was exhausted, his muscles burning to hold on to the powerful creature, but he refused to give up, knowing that his life depended on it. Finally, with a final burst of strength, Fletcher managed to force the crocodile's jaws open and slip out of its grip. He scrambled to the shore, his friends rushing to help him as he collapsed on the sand, blood streaming from his wounds. Despite the seriousness of his injuries, Fletcher was alive, thanks to his incredible strength and determination. He was rushed to the hospital, receiving extensive treatment for the wounds he sustained in the crocodile battle. News of Fletcher's incredible survival spread quickly, and he was hailed as a hero throughout Australia. He was interviewed by countless news outlets, telling his incredible story of how he had wrestled a crocodile and lived to tell the tale. Fletcher's friends were also hailed as heroes for their bravery in trying to help him during the attack. They had witnessed firsthand Fletcher's incredible courage and strength, and they knew he was a true warrior. In the following months, Fletcher underwent extensive physical therapy to recover from his injuries. He was determined to get back on the mat 
and resume his wrestling career, and he worked tirelessly to regain his strength and agility. Thanks to his incredible perseverance, Fletcher recovered and returned to college wrestling. He became even more successful than before, using his incredible strength and determination to overcome every obstacle that came his way. Fletcher's incredible survival story inspired countless others, and he became a true symbol of strength and courage in the face of adversity. He had faced one of the most dangerous creatures in the world and emerged victorious, proving that anything is possible with hard work and determination. There once was a crocodile farm in Thailand that was so well known that it was given the name Thai Reptile Haven. This farm was located in the exotic and verdant land of Thailand. Chikrit, a devoted handler with weathered hands and a profound love for reptiles, spent his days within its borders tending to the fearsome creatures that made this place their home. Chikrit had always possessed an uncanny affinity for these prehistoric reptiles in their early stages of evolution. Ever since he was a child, he had been mesmerized by the allure and power of these creatures, especially the way their lithe bodies moved through the water with an air of majestic grace. It, therefore, came as no surprise when he decided to spend his life tending to crocodiles and working to protect their natural habitats. One colossal crocodile, Samkai, who lived in Thai Reptile Haven, was considered the king of all the other reptiles there. His fame had spread far and wide before his arrival. Samkai was an enormous beast, measuring over 16 feet in length, with teeth as sharp as razors and an unruly temperament that earned him the title of the most dangerous crocodile on the farm. During one unfortunate day, the sun rose and shone golden on Thai Reptile Haven. At the same time, a group of eager tourists gathered around Sumkai's enclosure, excited to witness the feeding spectacle. Chikrit, ever the consummate professional, entered the enclosure armed with his many years of experience and a bucket full of mouth-watering chunks of meat. As Chikrit approached Sumkai, tourists watched with nervous anticipation as he cautiously navigated along the water's edge. The air was thick with expectation, and those who were watching had their cameras at the ready in hope that they could capture the magnificent sight that was about to take place. However, what occurred after that would shatter the calm atmosphere completely. Some Kai made a great dash forward as if he detected a window of opportunity and was seizing it. His enormous jaws closed around Chikrit's arm, entrapping him in a stranglehold that was similar to a vice. As Chikrit was dragged into the water, the tourists watched in horrified silence as he struggled desperately to maintain consciousness. The once majestic spectacle had deteriorated into a desperate fight for survival. Chikrit struggled to defend himself against the crushing power of Sumkai's jaws while flailing his body about in the water. It seemed time had stopped completely as the minutes dragged on into eternity. During this time, the emergency response team at Thai Reptile Haven quickly got to work. They hastened to the enclosure, bringing tranquilizers and grappling hooks to rescue Chikrit from the vicious animal's grasp. As the team swiftly approached the water, they wasted no time firing tranquilizer darts at Sumkai. The barrage of darts was unleashed, each one carrying potent sedatives. Gradually, the sedatives took effect, diminishing the strength of the hold exerted on Chikrit. The monstrous crocodile's strength waned with each passing second, and his jaws finally let go of their hold after they had been clamped shut for so long. When Chikrit was pulled from the water, his body bore deep lacerations and bite marks, leaving him weakened and battered. Thankfully, the paramedics arrived promptly and administered care for his injuries with urgency and empathy. They swiftly transported him to the nearest hospital, where skilled surgeons fought vigorously to save his life. As Chikrit gradually recovered physically and emotionally, the passing of the days turned into weeks, and the weeks turned into months. The scars on his body were a constant reminder of his terrifying experience as well as a testament to his resiliency and the immense power of the creatures he had devoted his life to protecting. The journey of Chikrit did not end on that fateful day. 
Despite the traumatic experiences he had been through, his passion for preserving crocodiles remained unwavering. Upon his return to Thai Reptile Haven, he adopted a markedly cautious demeanor. Driven by a newfound determination, he was committed to imparting the importance of demonstrating genuine awe and reverence for these magnificent creatures. He aimed to educate others about the delicate equilibrium between human interaction and the untamed forces of nature. The impact of Chakrit's story was felt far beyond the confines of Thai Reptile Haven, motivating countless individuals to approach wild animals with respect and caution. His story of survival served as a powerful illustration of the unyielding spirit that resides within the human heart, which is inextricably bound up with the extraordinary power of the natural world. Cho had been a crocodile handler in Myanmar for over 40 years. He had seen it all and knew how to handle the reptiles like no one else. He had cared for crocodiles from when they were small and nurtured them until they grew into massive beasts. But there was one crocodile that Cho had a special connection with. He had taken care of it since it was just a baby and had watched it grow into a monster over 16 feet long. One morning, Cho did his usual rounds, checking on the crocodiles and feeding them. As he approached the enclosure of the crocodile he had taken care of since it was young, he noticed that something was off. The crocodile seemed agitated and restless, unusual for a creature that spent most of its days basking in the sun. Cho didn't think too much of it and continued with his work, but as he was about to toss some food into the enclosure, the crocodile lunged at him with lightning speed, its massive jaws clamping down on his leg. Cho screamed in agony as the crocodile began to thrash him around. He tried to fight back, but he was no match for the brute force of the beast. His years of experience and knowledge of handling crocodiles seemed to have abandoned him in this moment of terror. The other handlers came running when they heard Cho's screams, but they were powerless to help. They watched in horror as the crocodile mauled their colleague, tearing into his flesh and bone. It took several minutes before they could pry the crocodile's jaws open and free Cho's leg. By then, he had lost considerable blood and was barely conscious. The ambulance rushed him to the nearest hospital, but it was too far away and the damage was too extensive. The doctors did everything they could, but Cho's injuries were severe. His leg was mangled, and he had lost a lot of blood. The news of the attack spread quickly, and Cho's family and friends rushed to his side. They feared the worst, but somehow he managed to pull through. It was a miracle, they said. He had cheated death. Over the next few months, Cho underwent multiple surgeries and spent countless hours in physical therapy. He had lost his leg and had to learn how to walk with a prosthetic. But through it all, he remained determined to return to his work with the crocodiles. As he recovered, Cho couldn't help but think about what had gone wrong. He had always been so careful and knew the crocodile inside and out. What had caused it to attack him? It wasn't until later that he found out that the crocodile had been suffering from a painful dental issue that had been causing it a great deal of discomfort. Cho had missed the size and had unwittingly pushed the animal over the edge. It was a hard lesson, but Cho learned it well. He knew that he could never let his guard down and had to remain vigilant at all times. He also became an advocate for better animal welfare practices in the industry pushing for more regular checkups for animals in captivity. Despite the attack, Cho's love for crocodiles never wavered. He continued to care for them, but he did so with a newfound respect and appreciation for their power and potential danger. Today, Cho is back working with the crocodiles. He has a new prosthetic leg that allows him to move around easily and he takes extra care to ensure the safety of himself and the animals he works with. His story serves as a reminder that no matter how experienced we are, we must never be complacent and always be careful, especially if our careers require great strength and courage to accomplish. 
Dalton had always been an adventurous soul. With a deep love for nature and a thirst for new experiences, he embarked on a journey to Zambia, a land renowned for its breathtaking landscapes and thrilling wildlife encounters. His main goal was to kayak the mighty Zambezi River, a dream he had nurtured for years. Little did he know that this adventure would test his courage and resilience in ways he could never have imagined. As Dalton arrived in Zambia, he was greeted by the warm hospitality of the locals. He was introduced to his guide, Kaumba, a seasoned adventurer who knew the Zambezi like the back of his hand. Together, they set off on their kayaking expedition, eagerly anticipating the wonders that awaited them. The Zambezi River was awe-inspiring, its powerful currents carving through the lush African landscape. Dalton marveled at the diverse wildlife along the riverbanks. Elephants, hippos, and a myriad of exotic birds. The adrenaline coursed through his veins as he navigated the rapids, skillfully maneuvering his kayak under Kaumba's watchful eye. On a sunny afternoon, as Dalton and Kaumba glided along the river's surface, their kayaks cutting through the water, a sudden commotion caught their attention. A crocodile lurking beneath the surface had sensed their presence and surged towards them with alarming speed. In an instant, chaos erupted as the immense creature rammed into their kayak, causing Dalton to be thrown forcefully into the river. Time seemed to slow down as Dalton immersed himself in the cold embrace of the Zambezi. Fear gripped his heart as he struggled to resurface, his limbs thrashing in the water. His mind raced torn between the instinct to fight for survival and the overwhelming pain surging through his body. Kaumba, the ever-vigilant guide, reacted swiftly, realizing Dalton's imminent danger. He steered his kayak toward the distressed tourist, fighting against the tumultuous currents. With Herculean effort, he managed to reach Dalton, grabbing him just as the crocodile lunged for another attack. The crocodile's powerful jaws snapped shut, narrowly missing Dalton's legs. In that terrifying moment, Dalton's life flashed before his eyes. He could feel the brute force of the crocodile's jaws clenching inches away, a chilling reminder of his peril. It was a miraculous stroke of luck that he escaped with his life, but not without severe injuries. Together, Kaumba and Dalton clung to the kayak, their adrenaline-fueled escape continuing downstream. The sound of the crocodile's growls faded in the distance as they put as much distance between them and the dangerous predator as possible. It was only then that the gravity of Dalton's injuries became apparent. Blood stained the water around him as Dalton groaned in pain. Kaumba, a beacon of calm amidst the chaos, skillfully maneuvered the kayak to the riverbank where he began administering first aid to the wounded tourist. With his knowledge of the local flora and fauna, Kaumba fashioned makeshift bandages from leaves and vines, expertly tending to Dalton's wounds. News of the terrifying crocodile attack spread quickly, reaching the ears of local authorities. A rescue team was dispatched, and Dalton was transported to a nearby medical facility. The road to recovery was long and arduous, marked by numerous surgeries and extensive rehabilitation. Yet Dalton's spirit remained unbroken. Months passed and Dalton emerged from the harrowing ordeal stronger than ever. He bore the scars of the attack as a testament to his resilience and the indomitable spirit of the human soul. Though his physical wounds had healed, the memory of that fateful day would forever be etched in his mind. Dalton's story spread far and wide, capturing the hearts of many who marveled at his bravery. He became an inspiration a living testament to the triumph of the human spirit in the face of adversity. His adventure in Zambia had transformed him, reminding him of the preciousness of life and the inherent risks hidden in nature's embrace. And so Dalton continued his travels, seeking new adventures, albeit with a newfound respect for the untamed wilderness. He carried the lessons he learned from Zambia close to his heart, forever grateful for the opportunity to survive, grow, and share his remarkable tale with the world. David had been working as a crocodile handler for many years. He deeply respected these powerful creatures 
and knew how to handle them safely. But he also knew that no matter how careful he was, a risk was always involved. One day, David was doing a live feeding show at the zoo where he worked. He was inside the crocodile enclosure, standing in shallow water, holding a large piece of meat on a stick. The crowd was gathered around him, eagerly watching as he teased the crocodile with the meat. David had done this routine many times before and was confident in his abilities. But this time, something went wrong. The crocodile lunged at him, snatching the meat from the stick and grabbing on to David's arm. David felt the crocodile's powerful jaws closing around his arm, and he knew he was in trouble. He tried to pull away, but the crocodile's grip was too strong. He could feel the sharp teeth piercing his flesh and the crushing pressure of the crocodile's bite. The crowd gasped in horror as they watched the scene unfold. They knew that David was in danger, and they feared the worst. But David did not give up. He knew that he had to fight back if he wanted to survive. He used all his strength to pull his arm free from the crocodile's grip, feeling a sharp pain as he did so. The crocodile, frustrated that it had missed its prey, thrashed around in the water, splashing David and the surrounding area. David knew he had to escape the enclosure before the crocodile could attack again. He slowly approached the gate, trying to keep his injured arm out of the water. The crocodile followed him, circled around him, waiting for another opportunity to strike. David knew he had to act fast if he wanted to survive. He remembered his training and knew he had to use his knowledge of the crocodile's behavior to his advantage. He picked up a nearby stick to create a barrier between himself and the crocodile. The crocodile, sensing that it was no match for David's knowledge and strength, eventually swam away disappearing beneath the water's surface. David stumbled out of the enclosure, clutching his injured arm. He was bleeding profusely, but he was alive. The crowd rushed to his aid, calling for an ambulance and offering him help. David was rushed to the hospital, where he underwent emergency surgery to repair the damage to his arm. It was a long and painful recovery process, but David was grateful to be alive. As he reflected on the experience, David knew he had learned a valuable lesson. He had been reminded of the power and unpredictability of nature, and he knew he could never let his guard down. But he also knew that he deeply loved and respected these magnificent creatures. He had dedicated his life to understanding and caring for them, and he knew he could not let one unfortunate incident define his career. And so David returned to his work as a crocodile handler, wiser and more cautious than ever before. He knew that he would never forget the experience of being attacked by a crocodile, but he also knew that he would never give up on his passion for working with these amazing animals. David's experience was a reminder that life was full of unexpected challenges and dangers, but with knowledge, respect, and determination. He managed to survive an encounter with one of the most powerful creatures on Earth, and that made him feel invincible. Mateo and Regina had always dreamed of taking a romantic vacation to Mexico. They had saved for years, and finally their dream became a reality. The couple loved to explore their surroundings to bond with each other, which is why every trip felt just like the first time. They arrived at the resort in the early afternoon and immediately explored the beautiful beaches and lush jungles surrounding them. As they strolled along the beach hand in hand, they were both taken aback by the beauty of the landscape. The sun was shining down on them and the sound of the waves crashing against the shore was calming. Suddenly, without warning, they were both yanked under the water. They struggled to return to the surface, but something powerful held them. It was then that they realized they were being attacked by a crocodile. The crocodile was massive and powerful, and Mateo and Regina were no match for its strength. The animal had them in its jaws, and they could feel its teeth sinking deeper into their flesh with each passing moment. They both screamed in pain, but the crocodile refused to let go. They knew they had to fight back if they were going to survive. Regina, in a moment of desperation, 
grabbed a nearby rock and slammed it against the crocodile's head. The animal was stunned momentarily, giving them time to break free. As they were both about to swim back to the shore, the crocodile grabbed Mateo again by the leg and put him into a death roll, making Regina swim back for him. Blood could already be seen in the water as the people just beside the shore started to panic and call for emergency services from the resort staff. Meanwhile, Regina still fights the crocodile, punching and gouging its eyes to free Mateo. The crocodile was hurt by Regina's actions, making it open its jaws and let go of Mateo's leg in an instant. They swam to the shore, bleeding and in pain, but relieved to be alive. The resort staff rushed to their aid, calling for medical attention and notifying the local authorities. They were taken to the hospital and treated for their injuries. It was a long and painful road to recovery, but they were grateful to be alive. As they lay in their hospital beds, they reflected on the terrifying ordeal they had just experienced. They couldn't believe they had survived an attack by a crocodile and were thankful to the staff at the resort for acting quickly and providing them with the help they needed. The couple received much attention from the local media, with reporters eager to hear their stories. They recounted the details of the attack and advised others to be cautious when exploring the nearby jungle and waterways. Despite the trauma of their experience, Mateo and Regina remained determined to make the most of their vacation. They refused to let fear consume them and decided to continue their trip. They spent the rest of their time at the resort, relaxing and enjoying each other's company, grateful for the second chance they had been given. As their vacation ended, Mateo and Regina packed their bags and prepared to head back home. They knew their lives would never be the same after what had happened to them, but they were grateful for their new perspective. They had learned that life was precious and every moment should be cherished. The couple returned to their home in Mexico, still recovering from their injuries, but with a newfound appreciation for life. They had survived an attack by a crocodile, something that many people would not have been able to do. They knew they had been given a second chance and were determined to make the most of it. Mateo and Regina's story became well known throughout the country with many admiring their bravery and determination. They symbolized hope and resilience, inspiring others to never succumb to adversity. In the end, the attack by the crocodile changed their lives forever. It had shown them the fragility of life and the strength and resilience of the human spirit. They would never forget the experience, but knew they would emerge from it stronger and more determined. The sun shone high in the sky as the students from a nearby high school arrived at the lake for their annual school trip. The lake was serene and picturesque, surrounded by lush green trees and wide grassy land. The students were excited to spend the day swimming and lounging in the sun, enjoying a much needed break from their daily routine. As the group began unpacking their bags and setting up their picnic area, a few noticed something in the water. A long, dark shape was moving slowly toward the shore. At first, they thought it was a log, but as it got closer, they realized it was a crocodile. The students were shocked and terrified. They had never seen a crocodile in person before and were unsure how to react. They started to gather their belongings and move away from the water, but it was too late. The crocodile had already made its way to the shore and was heading towards them. The students started to panic and run in different directions, trying to find safety. Some tried to climb the nearby trees, while others ran toward the safety of their bus. But the crocodile was too fast and too determined. It caught up to one of the students who had fallen behind and attacked her, dragging her back into the water. The screams of the students filled the air as they watched in horror as the crocodile attacked their classmate. They knew they had to do something to help her, but were frozen in fear. They could hear the girl's cries for help as she struggled to free herself from the crocodile's jaws. The teacher in charge of the trip quickly called for emergency services and tried to keep the remaining students calm, but the situation was quickly spiraling out of control. 
The crocodile seemed in a frenzy, attacking anyone who came too close. It was as if it tasted human flesh and would stop at nothing to get it. The emergency services arrived quickly but were not equipped to deal with a crocodile attack. They tried to scare the animal away, but it only worsened things. The crocodile became more agitated and attacked another student, trying to swim to safety. The situation was becoming more and more desperate. The students and teachers were at a loss for what to do. They felt helpless and trapped, with the crocodile terrorizing them from the safety of the water. As the sun began to set, the emergency services called in a team of wildlife experts specializing in crocodile attacks. They arrived with all the necessary equipment, including tranquilizers and traps. The experts quickly assessed the situation and devised a plan of action. They knew they had to act fast before the crocodile caused more damage. They set up a trap near the shore and used a tranquilizer dart to sedate the animal. The crocodile fell into the trap and the wildlife experts were able to remove it safely from the area. The injured students were quickly taken to the hospital and the remaining students were sent home. The incident left a deep scar on everyone present that day. The students who had been attacked had to undergo extensive physical and psychological treatment. The school organized counseling sessions for all the students and teachers who had been there that day. The incident also brought attention to the need for more safety measures around bodies of water that were home to dangerous animals. The school trip to the lake was canceled indefinitely and other schools in the area were advised to be more careful when organizing similar trips. Catherine lived in the heart of Australia, a teenager full of life and always up for an adventure. Since she was a child, she had a profound appreciation for nature, and she had never stopped looking for exciting new experiences amidst the breathtaking scenery that has always surrounded her. Her soul yearned for the unexplored lands and the mysteries that awaited her beyond the known world. Catherine made the decision to go investigate a lake in the area that was well known for its mesmerizing beauty on a bright and cheerful morning. She was driven by an insatiable curiosity. The sun's rays cast golden reflections onto the water's surface, giving the impression that it was inviting her to dive into its depths. Giddy with excitement, she stepped onto the bank, oblivious to the threats hiding just below the water's surface. Catherine's senses became heightened as she inched closer and closer to the edge of the water. She was startled by the eerie silence and a peculiar stillness in the air, both of which caused her to pause. She retreated involuntarily, but it was too late to do anything. Crocodiles are among the oldest known predators, and unbeknownst to her, they were hiding nearby, perfecting the art of camouflage so they could blend in with the surrounding vegetation. The sudden and forceful impact of Catherine's foot landing on the massive reptile triggered a cascade of chaotic events. The unexpected intrusion startled the crocodile, and it felt threatened by it, so it lunged at the teenager who wasn't expecting it. Its jaws closed violently on her leg, inflicting excruciating pain as sharp teeth pierced her flesh and dug deeper into the muscle tissue. The world for Catherine had become a haze of agony and panic instantly. While Catherine desperately tried to pull herself away from the crocodile's jaws to escape, she kicked the crocodile with the other leg she had free. The crocodile, acting extremely hostile at the moment, thrashed around in the lake, which caused Catherine's body to also thrash in the water. She was experiencing excruciating pain throughout her body as she sensed that her legs were about to be torn in two at any moment now. Catherine's survival instincts kicked in as she fought desperately against the overwhelming force of the crocodile's bite. She screamed for assistance and her voice echoed throughout the tranquility of the surrounding environment. Her screams of agony were overheard by a nearby family who was taking it easy by the lake when they happened upon her plight and rushed to her aid. This was an incredible stroke of luck. The family, who was familiar with the risks that were present in the area, responded promptly and decisively. The father, a burly man with weathered hands and a kind heart, 
was aware of the critical nature of the situation and the need to act quickly. After seizing a sturdy branch lying nearby, he delivered a series of powerful blows to the crocodile's head, ultimately resulting in the reptile releasing its hold on Catherine's leg. After delivering the killing blow, the crocodile quickly disappeared into the lake's murky depths, but not before leaving a trail of blood in its wake. Catherine's pain worsened as the adrenaline began to wear off. She experienced feelings of weakness and lightheadedness, and her vision became blurry. The family did not waste a second and quickly fashioned an improvised stretcher out of branches and clothing, then carefully transferred Catherine onto it. While her children assisted in carrying Catherine to their nearby vehicle, the mother, a nurturing figure with a soothing voice, offered words of comfort. In frantic haste, the family hurriedly drove her to the closest hospital, where a group of highly trained medical professionals awaited her arrival. They labored diligently to bring her condition under control, tending to her wounds with the utmost precision and attention to detail. Even though the injuries to the body were significant, none of the vital organs appeared to have been damaged, which was a miracle. Catherine knew that her road to recovery would be long, but despite this, she was overflowing with gratitude toward the family for coming to her aid. The days eventually turned into weeks, and the weeks eventually became months. Catherine endured several painful surgeries and strenuous rehabilitation, all the while dealing with pain and experiencing setbacks. Throughout the challenging journey that she had to endure, her family never left her side, continually providing support and encouragement. Catherine's spirit was comforted by their presence, which reminded her of the generosity and altruism that existed in the world. The wounds that Catherine sustained healed over time, but she was left with faint scars that served as a constant reminder of her terrifying experience. Despite this, she was adamant not to give in to her fears. Instead, she allowed the experience to transform her into someone with a profound appreciation for life and a renewed determination to safeguard the natural wonders she held in such high regard. Catherine embarked on a mission to raise awareness about wildlife conservation and promote responsible exploration after being inspired by the resiliency she witnessed within herself and the compassion shown by the family. She went to great lengths in the hope that others would learn from her mistakes and avoid the perils she had to contend with. People had their hearts moved by Catherine's story because of how far and wide it spread. Her bravery and resiliency served as a beacon of hope, inspiring others to face their fears head on and embrace the beauty of nature while respecting its power. From that fateful day onward, Catherine's journey became intertwined with a greater purpose, transforming her from a survivor into a guardian of the wild. Pearl had always been adventurous. She loved to travel and explore new places, and for her latest adventure, she decided to kayak on an African river. She had heard about the river's beauty and the wildlife around it, and she was excited to see it for herself. On the day of the kayaking trip, Pearl woke up early, packed her bags, and made her way to the river. She met with her guide, an experienced kayaker who knew the river like the back of his hand. They set out on their journey paddling through the river's clear waters and admiring the lush greenery surrounding them. As they were kayaking, Pearl spotted something in the distance. It was a crocodile basking in the sun on the riverbank. Pearl knew crocodiles were dangerous creatures, but she had never seen one up close before. She asked her guide if they could get a closer look, and he agreed, but warned her to keep her distance. As they approached the crocodile, Pearl felt a sense of excitement Fear. She could see the crocodile's sharp teeth and powerful body, but she was also captivated by its beauty and the way it moved. Suddenly, without warning, the crocodile lunged at Pearl's kayak. It grabbed the boat with its powerful jaws and shook it violently. Pearl was thrown into the water and she felt the cold water surround her. Pearl could feel the crocodile's jaws closing in on her as she struggled to stay afloat. She knew she had to act fast if she wanted to survive. She kicked her legs furiously and broke free from the crocodile's grip. 
But the danger was not over yet. The crocodile was still in the water with her, circling around her, waiting for the perfect moment to attack again. Pearl knew she had to get out of the water and back into her kayak. With all the strength she could muster, Pearl swam towards her kayak, hoping to reach it before the crocodile could attack again. She managed to climb back into her boat, but the crocodile still circled around her, waiting for another chance. Pearl's guide had been watching the whole thing unfold from a safe distance. He knew he had to act fast to save Pearl's life. He quickly paddled over to her and used his kayak to create a barrier between her and the crocodile. The crocodile, frustrated that it couldn't reach its prey, eventually swam away, disappearing beneath the water's surface. Pearl was shaken but alive. She knew she had come close to death but was grateful to be alive. She thanked her guide for saving her life and returned to shore, vowing never to underestimate nature's power again. As she reflected on her experience, Pearl realized that life was full of unexpected dangers and challenges, but she also knew that she was strong enough to face them head on. She had survived a crocodile attack, and that made her feel invincible. From that day on, Pearl became more determined to live life to the fullest. She continued to travel and explore new places, but she was more cautious and respectful of nature's power. She knew every adventure came with risks, but she also knew the rewards were worth it. And so Pearl's experience on the river became a defining moment in her life. It taught her to appreciate the beauty of the world around her and to never take life for granted. She survived a crocodile attack and was stronger because of it. Rahim is a young man working at a crocodile farm in Malaysia. He has been in this job for quite a long time now. Despite the dangers of working alongside crocodiles, he has grown used to it already. His job includes feeding the crocodiles, counting them, cleaning their enclosure, and handling one of their giant crocodiles, Umar. Umar has been an eye candy for locals and tourists who wanted to see a huge crocodile up close. Rahim has been single-handedly feeding and caring for Umar since it was turned over to the crocodile farm he's been working at. Despite Umar's huge and fearsome appearance, Rahim seems so used to feeding and caring for it that he sometimes forgets it's a dangerous animal he's been handling. Whenever Rahim remembers that Umar is potentially dangerous, he laughs it off and continues doing his job. One day, the head of the crocodile farm announced they had too many crocodiles and needed to relocate some to a nearby farm. The staff will inspect the crocodiles individually to see who will be transported to another crocodile farm in the following days. Rahim was silently hoping that Umar would get to stay at the crocodile farm. However, it was pretty impossible since Umar was one of the giant crocodiles occupying ample space in their enclosures. He knows that Umar might be transported, which makes him sad. After a couple of days, the head announced the number of crocodiles they would be transporting to another enclosure, and sadly, Umar was one of them. Rahim felt saddened, knowing that the crocodile that he's been taking care of for so long would be moved to another place and probably never seen again. The head of the enclosure immediately asked Rahim if he could accompany the other handlers who would be transporting Umar to another crocodile farm. He immediately agreed, since he also wanted to see the crocodile for the last time. A day after, Rahim and the three other handlers prepared to transport Umar to another crocodile farm using a van. As soon as Umar was successfully placed into the back of the van, the vehicle drove off with a handler driving the van and Rahim sitting with the two others. Rahim was dead silent during the drive, which was unusual since he was always cheerful. The other handlers with him thought it was because Umar would be transported to another farm. While driving through a highway, they suddenly heard a loud noise from the back of the van and suddenly the vehicle feels lighter than before. Rahim and the handlers looked at each other before realizing that Umar might have gotten out of the van and been run over by passing vehicles. 
They all stopped the van and immediately got out, only to see Umar walking on the road and scaring the drivers now seeing it. The handlers immediately grabbed a catch pole to neutralize Umar, while Rahim attempted to jump at the crocodile and prevent it from walking away. Unfortunately, Umar was too big to be held down by Rahim's slender body, and it suddenly got agitated and attacked Rahim. When the handlers returned with a catch pole, they saw the horrifying sight of Umar biting Rahim's arm and shaking him on the ground. Blood flowed from Rahim's arm, while people around the highway stopped to take videos of the crocodile attacking him. Meanwhile, there were others calling emergency services to rescue him. The handlers attempted to hold Umar down with the catch pole, but knew they couldn't do that since it had Rahim's arm in its mouth. Rahim kept screaming and pushing the crocodile away from him, but it was useless. He could feel his arm getting torn from his body until the handlers decided to gang up on Umar by slamming their bodies on it and trying to open its jaws with their bare hands. When the handler successfully opened Umar's jaws and freed Rahim from it, an emergency ambulance arrived and carried Rahim to a hospital while the three handlers neutralized Umar. Rahim remained unconscious until he woke up in the hospital, where he asked where Umar and the three handlers were. The people told Rahim that Umar had been neutralized and transferred to the crocodile farm, while discussing whether it would be spared or euthanized for attacking him. Despite being nearly killed by the crocodile, Rahim felt bad for Umar and took responsibility for the attack. In the untamed wilderness of the Philippines, where dense rainforests meet the roaring seas, a fateful morning unfolded with the sun painting the horizon in hues of gold. Juan, a young fisherman from a village near the river delta, set out alone in his rickety boat, determined to secure a bountiful catch for his family. Unbeknownst to Juan, rumors about a monstrous saltwater crocodile prowling the nearby river delta had spread. Locals spoke of its enormous size, razor-sharp teeth, and tales of it claiming the lives of unwary fishermen. However, undeterred by superstitions, Juan ventured further than ever, brimming with confidence in his fishing skills. As his boat glided effortlessly through the gentle waters, a warm glow cast by the climbing sun surrounded him. But a peculiar stillness in the air signaled an impending danger, the tranquil waters turning eerily calm. Then a disturbance in the water caught Juan's eye, ripples spreading from an unknown source. Curiosity tinged with caution, Juan turned to look at the source of the disturbance, yet he saw nothing amiss. Focused on his task, Juan cast his nets around the river delta. Just as he was about to finish, another disturbance echoed through the nearby waters, sending a shiver down his spine. In a split second, Juan turned toward the direction of the disturbance, only to realize that it was already too late. Emerging from the murky depths with unparalleled speed, an enormous saltwater crocodile lunged toward the unsuspecting fisherman. Instinctually, Juan managed to evade the first attack, but the commotion caused him to lose his balance and fall out of his boat, plunging into the water. Desperately wading through the water towards his boat, Juan's heart sank as a searing pain shot through his right leg. The massive crocodile had latched its powerful jaws onto his leg, trapping him in its relentless grip. He repeatedly kicked at the crocodile's face and body, but the creature remained unfazed, every movement intensifying the excruciating pain. The crocodile's primal instincts took hold in a horrifying turn of events, driving it to display savagery. With its powerful jaws clamped onto Juan's leg, the predator initiated a violent roll in the water, amplifying the force and devastation of its grip. As the crocodile twisted and thrashed, the ferocity of its movements tore through Juan's flesh and shattered his bones. The once intact and agile limb was reduced to a nightmarish scene of mangled and contorted flesh, the sinews and ligaments exposed in a grotesque display. Amidst the chaos and unbearable pain, Juan's anguished screams pierced the air. However, the wilderness only echoed silence as his desperate cries for help went unnoticed. There was no one in the vicinity to come to his aid, 
leaving him at the mercy of the relentless predator. Each agonizing wail that escaped Juan's lips was a stark reminder of his harrowing isolation. The surrounding trees and the vastness of the untamed wilderness stood as indifferent witnesses to the horrible fate befalling the young fisherman. In the distance, having claimed one of its gruesome prizes, the crocodile gnawed and devoured Juan's severed limb, sending chills down Juan's spine. But the carnage was not yet over. When the crocodile had swallowed Juan's severed limb, it made its way toward the incapacitated victim again. As Juan's leg had been ruthlessly ripped from his body, the loss rendered him severely handicapped in the treacherous waters. The absence of his limb made any attempt at fluid movement agonizingly challenging. His body, now imbalanced and weakened, struggled to maintain stability amidst the swirling currents. The once pristine surroundings were now transformed into a nightmarish scene. The water around Juan was tainted with the vivid red hue of his blood, gushing profusely from his mangled leg. The swirling currents carried the macabre evidence of his devastating injury, creating a gruesome trail that painted the once serene waters in a chilling reminder of his impending doom. However, the cruel fate had not yet finished its ruthless onslaught. In a relentless assault, the crocodile lunged again, its monstrous jaws seeking fresh prey. This time, Juan's arm became the unfortunate target of the predator's insatiable hunger. As the crocodile's powerful bite latched onto Juan's arm, his body convulsed with unimaginable pain. The creature's jaws, with rows of razor-sharp teeth, tore through his skin and flesh, tearing apart the delicate layers of his arm. Bones crunched and splintered under the immense force as the predator's relentless grip threatened to crush them into fragments. As the crocodile's jaws remained firmly locked on Juan's arm, the predator unleashed a brutal display of dominance. With a forceful motion, it vigorously shook its head from side to side, violently thrashing Juan's helpless body like a lifeless ragdoll. The sheer strength and power of the crocodile's movements made it seem as though Juan's existence was nothing more than a plaything in the jaws of this merciless beast. In an orchestrated act of dominance, the crocodile initiated a relentless tug of war, determined to drag its incapacitated victim beneath the water's surface. Its powerful muscles and relentless grip exerted an overwhelming force that Juan could do nothing to resist. He was at the complete mercy of the predator, rendered utterly helpless against its unyielding might. As the crocodile's relentless assault continued, it forcefully pulled Juan's body into the murky depths. The once tranquil and clear waters now turned into a swirling abyss of darkness and despair. The crocodile's sinister intent was to drown its prey, using the same element that had once been a source of sustenance for Juan. The murky water rushed into Juan's mouth and lungs, choking him with every breath. His vision became obscured amidst the muddy depths, leaving him disoriented and vulnerable. The lack of clarity further intensified his feeling of helplessness as he struggled to discern his surroundings in the suffocating darkness. Struggling for survival, Juan mustered all his remaining strength to kick and punch at the crocodile, fighting against his imminent demise. But his efforts were in vain as his body weakened and the crocodile's relentless hold proved insurmountable. Eventually, the commotion ceased and Juan's body went limp. The crocodile proceeded to devour the carcass of its unfortunate victim, leaving no trace of the brutal attack. After a day had passed, other fishermen stumbled upon a haunting sight in the river delta, a floating torso devoid of limbs and a head. Horrified, they immediately reported the situation to the authorities, sparking a search and investigation. Despite the efforts to uncover the truth, the remains of Juan and the massive crocodile that consumed them remained elusive, forever lost in the mysteries of the untamed wilderness. Gustave is a freelance French travel photographer who loves exploring any mysterious place he can stumble upon. He loves to photograph anything in his surroundings, including nature and animals. His work has been presented on various websites, and he is also well known for his stunning photographs of nature and wildlife. 
He's creative when capturing nature photographs and fearless and curious when taking photos of wild animals. He also started his blog, documenting his travels and sharing his experiences with others who aspire to be travel photographers like him or those interested in travel photography. For his next exhibit, Gustav travels to the land down under, which is Australia. His followers requested him to go to Australia since a lot of terrifying and fascinating wildlife lives there. His followers' requests intrigued him, so he traveled to Australia to take his next set of stunning photographs. Upon arriving in Australia, he immediately went to some wildlife spotting areas and national parks that his followers suggested he visit to take photographs of nature and animals. And as usual, Gustav has taken breathtaking photos of his surroundings and some animals. He books a tent beside a famous lake attraction in Western Australia for his next stop. He plans to take breathtaking photographs of the lake and some unusual wildlife that he would see even at night. As soon as he arrived in the area, he unpacked his belongings and grabbed his camera to attempt to try to find a subject he could take photos of. After failing to find an interesting subject, he decides to sleep and rest since it's also nighttime. He ate a small amount of his packed dinner before he drifted off to sleep and prepared himself for a long day ahead. The next day, Gustav woke up enthusiastic and excited about his day. He quickly grabs his camera and leaves his tent, only to find an unusual and terrifying thing next to the lakefront. It is none other than a crocodile. The crocodile was facing the lake as it could be seen resting just a few feet away from Gustav's tent. Despite knowing that the crocodile is dangerous, Gustav holds on to his camera and carefully tiptoes his way beside the crocodile. With his hand slightly shaking, Gustav lifts his camera and leans closer to the crocodile, tremendously careful not to slip or slide into the crocodile. The crocodile suddenly moved to the lake's shallow water which gave Gustav a mini heart attack. Despite these red flags, Gustav still hasn't given up on attempting to take a photo of the croc. He gets closer and perches on the bank as he takes a few shots of the crocodile with his camera until he loses his footing and lands straight on top of the crocodile. The crocodile was surprised as it instinctively flinched and gripped Gustav's leg, causing him to scream in pain and drop his camera into the lake. The crocodile quickly put Gustav into a death roll as it bit his leg and shook him for a few seconds. Gustav squirmed as he tried to kick the crocodile with his other free leg to save himself. Unfortunately, it was useless. He could already feel his leg tearing apart, making him cry in excruciating pain. While Gustav was continuously bitten and attacked by the crocodile, he saw huge stones near the lakefront and attempted to grab one. As he held on to one of those stones, he threw it into the crocodile's face, which caused the animal to loosen its grip on Gustav's leg. Gustav kept throwing stones at the crocodile's face until he picked up a bigger one and smashed it into the animal, causing it to release his leg and swim away in the water. He was left there bloodied, wounded, and injured with no one to help him. As he was losing hope, a group of backpackers suddenly saw him and immediately went to him to check him out. As they saw Gustav in a horrifying condition, they quickly tried to carry him into their vehicle and take him to a hospital. Despite getting bitten by the crocodile, Gustav's legs are fine and they need continuous treatment to recover fully. Alec had always been an adventurous explorer traveling to the most remote parts of the world in search of the unknown. He had heard about the Zambezi River for years, but only recently did he decide to venture into its depths. He had heard stories of the creatures that lived in its murky waters, but he was determined to see it for himself. Alec arrived at the Zambezi River early in the morning, his heart racing excitedly. He had all his gear, including his trusted pocket knife, which he had used on many previous expeditions. He set up camp near the riverbank and began to explore the area. The sun was shining brightly and the water was crystal clear. As he walked along the riverbank, Alec noticed something moving in the water. 
He knelt down and peered into the depths, trying to see what it was. Suddenly, he saw a crocodile emerge from the water, its jaws wide open. Alec froze in fear, unsure of what to do. The crocodile lunged at Alec, grabbing his leg with its powerful jaws. Alec screamed in agony as the crocodile's teeth sank into his flesh. He tried to pull away, but the crocodile was too strong. He tried kicking the crocodile's face with his free leg, but it was useless. He could feel his leg getting torn apart at any second, and he was frightened knowing that he was in a foreign country and he only had himself to save his life. Alec was suddenly shaken by the crocodile as the animal's teeth were still sunken into his leg, causing him to scream in excruciating pain. Alec had no other option but to grab something from his pocket. With one hand, Alec reached into his pocket and pulled out his trusty pocket knife. He opened the blade and plunged it into the crocodile's eye. The crocodile released its grip on Alec's leg and thrashed in the water. Alec managed to pull himself free and stumbled back towards the riverbank. Alec could feel the blood gushing from his leg as he lay on the ground. He knew he needed medical attention, but was miles away from the nearest hospital. He managed to bandage his leg with a tourniquet made from his shirt, using his pocket knife to cut the fabric. He knew he had to keep moving if he wanted to survive. Alec crawled towards his campsite using his pocket knife to cut through the thick underbrush. The pain in his leg was excruciating, but he refused to give up. He could feel his strength fading, but he kept pushing forward. After several hours of crawling, Alec finally reached his campsite. He collapsed onto the ground, exhausted and in agony. He knew he needed help, but was too weak to call out for assistance. He lay there, his body shaking with pain, waiting for someone to find him. Several hours later, a group of hikers stumbled upon Alec's campsite. They found him lying on the ground, his leg badly injured and bleeding profusely. They immediately called for an ambulance and Alec was rushed to the nearest hospital. Alec's injuries were severe, but he managed to survive the attack. He spent months in the hospital recovering from his injuries, but never lost his love for adventure. He knew that the risk of exploring the unknown could be great, but he also knew that the rewards were even greater. In the end, Alec's bravery and determination saved his life. He had faced one of Earth's most fearsome creatures and came out victorious. Despite his pain and suffering, he never lost his sense of adventure or his love for the unknown. For Alec, the Zambezi River would always remind us of the dangers and rewards of exploring the world around us. There once was a picturesque lake in Australia's vast sun-soaked land, tucked deep within its untamed wilderness. The lake was surrounded by lush greenery and towering eucalyptus trees, creating a picture-perfect scene. From this location, Pastor Isaias, a godly man who exuded humility and devotion, embarked on his journey to baptize ten people looking for spiritual solace. During the time that Pastor Isaias was getting ready for the sacred ceremony, the rising sun painted the sky with a golden hue. He was carrying a wooden cross with him as he made his way toward the peaceful shores of the lake, dressed in the white robes that were his trademark. As the ten people, full of faith and hope, waited for their moment of rebirth, the atmosphere buzzed with excitement and anticipation. When the first person entered the water, a ripple was sent through the lake's surface, which served as a warning sign of the imminent danger hiding beneath the surface. The congregation was unaware that a massive crocodile had silently made its way toward the shallows, drawn by the commotion and the promise of an easy meal. The calm atmosphere was shattered just as Pastor Isaiah recited the holy verses. The crocodile exploded out of the water like a bolt of lightning and pounced on the pastor's leg, snarling its powerful jaws as it did so. The congregation's joyful celebration turned into screams of terror, filling the air with gasps of horror as the event unfolded. The ferocious reptile flailed its powerful tail and dragged the helpless pastor deeper into the water as it continued to attack. 
However, although he was in an extremely precarious situation, Pastor Isaiah clung strongly to his faith. He continued to pray with every ounce of strength, his voice a testament to unyielding hope even though his body began to fail him. The ten individuals who had come to be baptized were rendered helpless by shock and fear as they watched the brutal attack unfold before their eyes. They had come to be baptized. However, as the voice of Pastor Isaiah reached their ears, the unyielding faith that he possessed resounded deep within their souls, which awoke their courage. The congregation members quickly sprang into action after calling upon their combined strength. They connected themselves to a chain of people and reached their arms out toward the pastor, intent on rescuing him. Their hold became increasingly firm, and they maintained an unwavering determination throughout the ordeal. The congregation was able to free the pastor from the grasp of the tenacious crocodile, thanks to their dogged persistence and unyielding determination. But the victory did not come without a price, as Pastor Isaiah was left with serious wounds, and his body was beaten and broken. The ten individuals supposed to be baptized by their spiritual leader displayed an overpowering outpouring of love and gratitude as they gathered around him after he was injured. They realized that their newly discovered faith had not only led them to this holy lake, but also brought them together in a bond greater than the sum of their individual travels. The story of Pastor Isaiah and the ten individuals he had baptized reverberated throughout the land as the news of the terrifying incident spread. Their bravery and commitment became a source of motivation for people all over the world, serving to remind others of the transformative power of faith and the tenacity of the human spirit. Together they set out on a path toward healing, which would benefit not only Pastor Isaiah, but the entire community. They lifted each other up through the recitation of countless prayers and the performance of countless acts of kindness, which provided solace and strength in the face of adversity. The scars on Pastor Isaiah's body began to heal after several months, a testament to the physical and spiritual resilience he had embodied throughout his life. The congregation continued to meet by the lake, where their faith had been tried and strengthened throughout their shared experience even though it had irrevocably altered them. It was only a matter of time before the remarkable story of Pastor Isaiah and the ten individuals he had baptized disappeared from the headlines. Still, its impact will forever be etched in the hearts and minds of those who had the opportunity to witness it. It served as a constant reminder that the light of faith and unity can triumph, illuminating the path to healing and hope even in the face of darkness. Xavier and Florence were awakened by the sound of heavy rain pouring on the roof of their home. Their mother, Elena, was in a panic as she contacted emergency rescue services to help them get out of the area and taken into an evacuation center. It's been raining heavily since yesterday at Daly River in Australia. Knowing that it's a flood-prone area, Residents have to be taken to evacuation centers to prevent further damage and decrease the risk of flood danger. Meanwhile, Florence was intrigued by their mother's calls for help downstairs, so she got up and checked on Elena. To her surprise, the water downstairs was already waist deep, so her mother was in an absolute panic when she couldn't contact emergency rescue services. Florence suddenly felt her senses light up in a panic as she ran downstairs and told Xavier to get up and help their mother. Xavier got out of bed and checked Elena, to which he also felt horrified that the water was getting higher as the rain kept falling continuously. The siblings got downstairs and submerged half their bodies in the water to get as many belongings as possible. After that, they helped Elena get upstairs and clean themselves up so they could change into fresh clothes. Xavier worriedly asked Elena if emergency rescue services were coming for them, to which Elena answered that somebody would help them sooner or later. Elena smiles as she tries to reassure her children that they'll be safe and sound soon. After changing into fresh clothes, Elena and her children began packing their belongings, including food, clothes, essential documents, flashlights, and first aid kits. Xavier and Florence also wore a raincoat to cover themselves from the heavy rain, 
while Elena chose to soak herself outside while waiting for rescue to come. The three of them carefully snuck themselves out the second floor window to get to the house's roof. Even though it was raining hard, the three of them managed to get to the top of the house where they waited for rescue. Elena, Xavier, and Florence could see the water rising and drowning many homes around their neighborhood. They can also visit their other neighbors who weren't rescued yet, and they're most likely waiting for rescue services to come and pick them up. The heavy rain isn't improving with time, as it keeps pouring and drowning everything within Daly River. Xavier offers his raincoat to his mother, fearing she might get a cold, but Elena insists that she'll be fine once they get to the evacuation center. As they are about to lose hope, Florence quickly alerts Xavier and Elena that she sees a group of people on rescue boats at a distance. As they tried to get a closer look, it was indeed the emergency rescue services. Elena, Xavier, Florence, and the neighbors began screaming and waving their hands so they would get noticed by the rescuers. As the rescuers were getting close, they demanded Elena, Xavier, and Florence be first in the rescue boats, since they were minor children. The neighbors understood and were told that another batch of rescuers were on their way to save them shortly. Elena sighed in relief when she got on the rescue boat with Florence and a rescuer who was rowing the boat manually. Xavier was on another rescue boat just behind them with two rescuers. It was still raining heavily, but Elena was relieved they were now saved and would soon be taken to an evacuation center. A rescuer also gave her a raincoat to prevent her from catching a cold. As they were carefully rowing through the flood, Elena, Florence, and the rescuer suddenly felt uneasy when they heard something bump their boat from underneath the water. The rescuer stopped rowing and held his paddle firmly until they heard another bump, which was now heard by the other boat behind them in which Xavier was in. Florence felt nervous as Elena held her close and told her to relax. They waited a few minutes to see if they would hear another bump from underneath, but they heard nothing. The rescuer decided to move forward through the flood as he thought it could be driftwood, but he was wrong. Within a blink of an eye, a mid-sized crocodile just surprisingly leaped out of the water and grabbed Elena by the torso, quickly dragging her underneath. Florence screamed as she saw her mother held by a crocodile, as Xavier did. The rescuer soon jumped into the water to save Elena. Elena tried to squirm as she fought the crocodile by punching its face, but it was useless. The crocodile had her in a death roll, biting her torso and leaving wounds all over her arms and shoulders. Blood can already be seen in the water as the rescuer had difficulty trying to save her because of the heavy rain. The two rescuers with Xavier in the rescue boat also jumped into the water to try and save Elena from the crocodile. The crocodile attacks Elena with its bites until the woman doesn't respond anymore. The rescuer who first jumped into the water grabbed his paddle and repeatedly smashed it on the crocodile's head to hurt it. The other two rescuers used their strength to pry the crocodile's jaws open and grab Elena from its mouth. When they successfully did this, the crocodile swam away and the rescuers carried Elena to the rescue boat and began performing CPR to save her. Xavier and Florence began to cry as they saw their mother unconscious and on the verge of death due to the attack. After a few seconds, a rescuer successfully revived Elena, which relieved them. Elena then cried out in pain because of her wounds caused by the crocodile. The rescuers rushed to take them to the evacuation center. When they arrived, Xavier and Florence were taken by some social workers and Elena was quickly taken to a nearby hospital due to the severity of her wounds. She miraculously survived the attack, but it will take her a long time to recover. After the attack, the rescuers and the people became more aware of the lurking crocodile in floodwaters that brutally attacked Elena. The rescuers who were bound to rescue other stranded residents of Daly River were informed and ensured that they'd watch out for the crocodile to prevent another gruesome attack. The next story tells of an 18-year-old fisherman named Ollie and how he escaped death when unfortunately attacked by a crocodile 
while doing the thing he loves the most. Ollie is an 18-year-old boy who has always been an avid fisherman. From when he was a young kid, he spent countless hours on the water, casting his line and waiting for a bite. His love for fishing only grew as he got older, and he eventually made a career out of it, becoming a full-time fisherman in Queensland, Australia. Although still studying, Ollie devoted most of his time to fishing. He would go fishing with a group of fishermen on some days, but he prefers to fish alone as he wants to spend most of his time alone. One day, Ollie decided to head out to a remote location on the river to catch some barramundi. He had fished in this spot before, and it had always been a good spot for him. As he settled into his fishing spot, he had no idea that this day would be the most terrifying day of his life. It was early morning, and the sun was just beginning to rise over the river. The water was calm, and Ollie could hear the sounds of the bush waking up around him. He cast his line and waited patiently for a bite. He didn't have to wait long before he felt a tug on his line. Excitedly, he started to reel in his catch. As he was reeling in his fish, he felt a sudden jolt and his line went slack. He thought he had lost the fish, but he saw something that made his blood run cold as he looked into the water. A massive crocodile had taken his catch and was now approaching him. Ollie froze. He had heard stories of crocodile attacks in the area, but never thought he would be a victim. As the crocodile got closer, he knew he had to act fast. He grabbed his fishing rod and tried to fend off the crocodile, but it was too powerful. With a sudden lunge, the crocodile snatched Ollie's arm in its jaws and dragged him into the water. The attack was brutal. The crocodile thrashed around in the water trying to drag Ollie under. He could feel the pressure of the crocodile's jaws on his arm and knew he was in grave danger. Instinctively, he fought back. He used his fishing rod as a weapon, hitting the crocodile repeatedly in the head and face. The crocodile was relentless, but so was Ollie. He refused to give up and continued fighting back with all his strength. Finally, after an eternity, the crocodile released its grip and swam away. Ollie was left bleeding and battered in the water, but he was alive. With the little strength that he had left, Ollie managed to drag himself out of the water and onto the riverbank. He knew he needed help, and he quickly called for emergency services. It was a race against time, but luckily help arrived quickly. Ollie was rushed to the hospital where he underwent emergency surgery to repair the damage to his arm. The road to recovery was long and painful, but Ollie was determined to return to fishing. He knew that he couldn't let the attack defeat him. With the support of his family and friends, he slowly regained his strength and confidence. Months later, Ollie returned to the river where he was attacked. This time, he was not alone. He was joined by a group of fellow fishermen who were there to support him and protect him. He felt a sense of peace as he cast his line into the water. He had faced his worst fear and come out on the other side. From that day on, Ollie never forgot the lesson he learned. He knew that the river was dangerous and that he had to respect the power of nature. But he also knew he was strong enough to fight for himself if he went through dangerous situations again, just like the one he had when he was on death's way with the crocodile attack. In the heart of Thailand, nestled among the lush green jungles and towering limestone cliffs, lies the Samut Prakarn Crocodile Farm and Zoo. It's a popular tourist attraction that draws visitors worldwide to witness the ferocious predators in their natural habitat. One of the star attractions at the zoo is a massive saltwater crocodile named Crid. Crid was a formidable creature, measuring over 16 feet long and weighing nearly a ton. He was known for his aggressive behavior and had already attacked several zookeepers. Despite the risks, Prem, a seasoned crocodile handler, had volunteered to work with Crid in the past few years. Of all the zookeepers that Crid had attacked in the past, Prem was the only one who could tolerate the crocodile's behavior and still work alongside him. 
Prem was the one who begged the management not to remove or euthanize Crid for his behavior, but rather understand that it's their nature to become aggressive sometimes. It was a dangerous job, but the rewards were high, and Prem loved the thrill of working with such a magnificent animal. The zoo was bustling on a hot summer day, with visitors eager to witness the feeding exhibit. Prem stepped into the enclosure, carrying a raw chicken and beef bucket. Crid, sunbathing on the shore, immediately caught a whiff of the meat and began to stir. As Prem approached the water's edge, Crid surged forward with lightning speed, his massive jaws snapping just inches from Prem's leg. The crowd gasped in horror as the handler stumbled back, narrowly avoiding the crocodile's deadly jaws. Prem had worked with Crid for years and knew his temperament well. He knew the slightest wrong move could provoke the crocodile's aggression, and he needed to remain calm and composed. He took a deep breath and slowly moved back toward the water, tossing small pieces of meat toward Crid to keep him distracted. The crocodile eagerly snapped up the scraps, and everything seemed to be going smoothly for a few moments. But then, without warning, Crid lunged forward again, his jaws closing around Prem's arm. The crowd shrieked as they watched the crocodile thrash Prem around like a rag doll, his teeth tearing through flesh and bone. Despite the excruciating pain, Prem refused to panic. He knew that sudden movements could worsen the situation and cause Crid to attack even more aggressively. He remained calm and focused, keeping his limbs away from the crocodile's jaws. The other handlers rushed to Prem's aid, but it was too late. Crid had already inflicted severe damage to his arm, and it was clear that he needed medical attention immediately. Prem was rushed to the hospital, where he underwent emergency surgery to repair the damage to his arm. The doctors were amazed that he had survived the attack, considering the severity of his injuries. Despite the trauma he had endured, Prem was determined to get back to work. He knew the job came with risks, but he loved working with the crocodiles and couldn't imagine doing anything else. In the following days, he worked closely with the other handlers to review the safety protocols and ensure that a similar incident would never happen again. They implemented new safety measures, including reinforced enclosures and stricter feeding protocols. Slowly but surely, Prem began to heal. He underwent months of physical therapy to regain the use of his injured arm and his scars slowly faded with time. Years passed and Crid remained a popular attraction at the zoo, but the incident had left a lasting impact on Prem, and he never forgot his lesson about the dangers of working with such powerful predators. Despite the risks, he continued to work with the crocodiles, but always remained vigilant and cautious, never taking their behavior for granted. And while the scars on his arm may have faded, the memory of the attack would stay with him for the rest of his life. Maeve showed her identical twin sons, Ashton and Asher, love and devotion as a mother. She cherished every moment she could spend with them, vigilantly watching for their health and well-being. The family went on a memorable yacht cruise one bright and sunny afternoon to create memories that would last a lifetime together. They had no idea that this day, which appeared to be perfect, would soon become a nightmare for them. Maeve watched her twin children as the yacht carefully navigated the glistening waters while she was on board with them. They laughed and played, their childlike excitement filling the space around them with happiness. On the other hand, they were unaware of a threat hiding just below the water's surface, a massive crocodile stealthily approaching the yacht. As luck would have it, the menacing predator jumped out of the water and onto the deck as soon as it realized there was a chance to do so. When Maeve caught a glimpse of the dangerous beast, her heart began to race rapidly. She leapt into action without conscious thought, wrapping her arms around Ashton and Asher to protect them from the impending threat. Maeve was startled when the crocodile lunged at her, letting out a ferocious roar as its powerful jaws closed around her arm. She was in excruciating pain as she fought to protect her children, but she was determined to do whatever it took. 
Maeve's eyes lit up with resolve as she channeled every ounce of strength she possessed to engage in a grappling match with the dangerous animal. The conflict was intense, and the frantic fight could be heard all across the deck. Maeve was dragged closer to the water's edge as the crocodile thrashed violently. Her veins were filled with fear, but her love for her children gave her an extraordinary surge of adrenaline. Maeve was so determined to break free from the reptile's grasp that she kicked, scratched, and even landed blows on the sensitive snout of the creature. She managed to pull her arm away from the crocodile's hold after the reptile momentarily loosened its hold on it. On the other hand, the fight was by no means over. Maeve's arm was gushing blood, but she still managed to grab hold of Ashton and Usher and urge them to get away to a safer place. She had tears streaming down her face as she whispered words of reassurance to them, assuring them that everything would be okay, even though she was crying. As they hurriedly obeyed their courageous mother's instructions, the expressions on the young children's faces revealed a mixture of fear and trust. While this was happening, Maeve turned around to face the crocodile, and the pain in her arm became increasingly severe with each move she made. She mustered up an incredible amount of bravery to protect her children from harm. Although weakened, she would not permit the creature to harm her cherished sons. Maeve let out a defiant roar as she charged the crocodile, using every last ounce of strength. She dealt vicious blows, focusing on the creature's weak points as she did so. The crocodile fought back, snapping its jaws threateningly, but Maeve's love for her children gave her the strength to persevere. The sound of help from a distance filled the air as the fight continued. Another yacht had come upon the commotion and was approaching to help those in trouble. Maeve clung to the possibility of a happy ending as she fought to keep the crocodile at bay. Maeve finally successfully stopped the crocodile's attack with a well-placed blow that rendered it temporarily helpless. It was the chance she was looking for. She mustered up the last of her strength and, with lightning speed, made her way to the edge of the yacht, where the crew eagerly extended a helping hand. Maeve was dragged to safety by the efforts of many people, even though her body was bruised and bloody. She clung to her son so tightly that their cries of relief were mixed in with her own cries of anguish as she wailed in agony. They were no longer at risk. Immediately, emergency services were requested, and Maeve was taken to the hospital in an ambulance. She emerged as a symbol of resiliency and undying love because she survived the brutal attack despite suffering severe injuries. Maeve came to be looked up to by many people as a source of motivation after the news of her brave act spread. She was admired for her selfless sacrifice and her unwavering protection of her children. When Ashton and Asher were growing up, they were always told that their mother was brave and would do anything to protect them. Maeve's love for her sons remained unwavering, although she had physical and emotional wounds. Their traumatic experience served as a reminder of the value of human life and the determination of a mother's love, an unbreakable bond that not even the most terrifying of predators can extinguish. Hailed as the largest living reptile on Earth, crocodiles have been long feared by many people of all ages and all times. This video tells stories of how some people were unfortunate to encounter a crocodile, but were lucky enough to survive their way from death. Alexa Barnes was a passionate zookeeper who loved her job at the Australian Zoo. She cared for Rosie, a massive saltwater crocodile who was the star of the zoo's live feeding shows. Rosie is a 14-year-old crocodile and is expected to mature in the next two or three years. Alexa started working when the crocodile was only nine years old and thus has been taking care of her for five years. Rosie was once an aggressive crocodile but has shown a calm temperament when she got used to Alexa's presence, especially during live feeding shows. Alexa has been working with Rosie for several years and knew her behavior patterns well. She had always been careful while handling Rosie, but on that fateful day, something went terribly wrong. 
It was a sunny afternoon, and the zoo was filled with tourists who had come to witness another live feeding show, starring Alexa and Rosie. The tourists, especially the children, were excited to witness another live feeding show featuring the two. Alexa had just started the show, and Rosie eagerly awaited her meal. As Alexa approached the pool with the bucket of fish, she noticed that Rosie was more agitated than usual. She felt a sense of unease, but she continued with the show. As she lowered the bucket of fish into the water, Rosie suddenly lunged out of the water and clamped her jaws around Alexa's arm. Alexa screamed in pain as Rosie began to drag her into the water and immediately put her on a death roll. The audience watched in horror as Alexa struggled to escape Rosie's grasp, but she was no match for the powerful crocodile. Alexa screamed as the other handlers and zookeepers panicked about what to do or who to contact. Rosie kept biting Alexa's arm and shaking her body in the water, while the tourists with children immediately fled to prevent their children from seeing the horrible scene. Blood was already dripping down Alexa's arm as she struggled to pull it from Rosie's jaws. She knew her arm would be torn off at any second if it wasn't for her trying to fight the crocodile by punching and hitting it in the face, eyes, and nose. Alexa picks up all her strength left in her body and throws another punch on Rosie's nose, causing the crocodile's jaws to open, allowing her to pull her arm out from the crocodile's mouth. The other zookeepers rushed to her rescue, but it took them several minutes to pull Alexa out of the water. She was severely injured when they pulled her out, and her arm was almost torn off. The ambulance arrived quickly and rushed Alexa to the hospital, where she underwent emergency surgery to save her arm. The incident left Alexa traumatized, spending several weeks in the hospital recovering from her injuries. The attack had scarred her physically and emotionally, and she was unsure if she could ever work with animals again. The news of the attack had spread like wildfire, and the zoo was inundated with messages of support for Alexa. The zookeepers were also shaken by the incident and struggled to come to terms with what had happened. Rosie was immediately taken out of the live feeding show, and an investigation was launched to determine what had caused the attack. The investigation revealed that Rosie had been suffering from a health condition that had made her more agitated and aggressive than usual. The condition had gone undetected, and it was only after the attack that the zookeepers realized that something was wrong with Rosie. The decision to euthanize Rosie after the attack was immediately canceled and replaced by medication for the crocodile. After several months of therapy and rehabilitation, Alexa slowly recovered from her injuries. She was determined to return to work and refused to let the incident define her career. She returned to the Australian Zoo and started to work with other animals, but was still hesitant to work with Rosie. Months passed and the zoo decided to reintroduce Rosie to the live feeding show. Alexa watched nervously from a distance as Rosie was fed by another zookeeper. As she watched, she realized Rosie was still the same crocodile she had known for years. The attack was a tragic accident, and she knew she had to move on from it. Over time, Alexa began to work with Rosie again, and she slowly regained her confidence as a zookeeper. The incident had been a traumatic experience, but Alexa had emerged from it stronger and more determined than ever. She knew that working with animals came with risks, but she also knew she could not imagine doing anything else. Aria had always loved camping, and she made it a priority to take a few trips every year to explore the natural beauty of Australia. On this particular trip, she decided to head to a remote lake she had heard about from a friend. She packed up her car with all the necessary camping gear and her faithful companion, Sienna, a female dog who had been her constant companion for the past 10 years. Despite living alone, Aria really never felt lonely with Sienna's presence. Sienna has been with her ever since she was only a puppy and until she had grown into a beautiful and loving dog. 
She also enrolled Sienna in obedience classes and has also been awarded the dog with the best temperament, making Arya proud of her. After Sienna graduated from obedience classes, Arya started to bring her on every camping trip she had so she wouldn't be lonely and experience the beauty of nature while bonding. As they drove down the dirt road leading to the lake, Arya felt a sense of excitement building within her. She had heard that the lake was home to some of the country's most beautiful and serene camping spots. As they pulled up to the camping area, she saw it was everything she had hoped for. The lake was crystal clear and the campsite was nestled amongst the trees, providing plenty of shade and privacy. Arya quickly set up camp and spent the rest of the day exploring the area with Sienna. They went for a swim in the lake, walked along the nearby hiking trails, and enjoyed the peacefulness of being surrounded by nature. Arya built a fire as night fell and settled in for a night of stargazing with Sienna curled up by her side. But their peaceful night was about to be interrupted in the most terrifying way imaginable. Just before midnight, Arya was awoken by a loud splash in the lake. She sat up, trying to see through the darkness, but couldn't find anything. Sienna was growling, her hackles raised, and Arya sensed something was wrong. Suddenly, she heard a low rumble, and the water near the shore began to churn violently. As she shone her flashlight towards the water, Arya saw the outline of a massive crocodile, at least 20 feet long, charging towards her and Sienna. Arya screamed and tried to run, but the crocodile was too fast and was upon them in seconds. Sienna bravely stood her ground, barking and biting at the crocodile to protect Arya. The next few moments were a blur of chaos and terror. The crocodile clamped its powerful jaws around Sienna, lifting her off the ground and dragging her toward the water. Arya grabbed Sienna's leash, trying to pull her back, but the crocodile was too strong. In a last desperate effort, Arya kicked the crocodile in the face, causing it to release Sienna and turn its attention toward her. Arya tried to run, but the crocodile caught her in its jaws, crushing her leg and dragging her toward the water. Arya screamed in pain and fear, but she refused to give up. She grabbed a hold of a nearby rock and swung it with all her might striking the crocodile on the head. The blow stunned the crocodile, releasing Arya and allowing her to scramble back to safety. Other campers had been alerted by the commotion and had come to Arya's aid. They managed to get her and Sienna into a car and drove them to the nearest hospital, where Arya was treated for her injuries. Despite the attack's severity, Arya and Sienna survived, thanks to Arya's quick thinking and bravery. The attack left Arya shaken, both physically and emotionally. She was grateful to be alive, but the memory of the crocodile's jaws closing around her leg haunted her. She knew that she would never forget the sound of Sienna's growls as she tried to protect her, and the image of the massive crocodile charging toward them would forever be etched in her mind. Mia had always been an adventurous soul. Growing up in a small town near the banks of Lake Victoria, she had always been fascinated by the vast expanse of water that lay before her. And so, when her parents decided to take her on vacation to a nearby resort that boasted a large swimming pool, Mia was excited beyond words. But as she stood on the edge of the pool, she felt a sense of disappointment wash over her. The water was clear, but it was hardly the adventure she had hoped for. And so, as she watched the other kids splash around in the pool, she yearned for something more. Then she heard about the lake just beyond the resort. A crocodile-infested lake, they said, where only the bravest of souls dared to swim. And Mia knew, right then, that she had to take the plunge. The next day, she set out on her quest. She walked through the dense forest beyond the resort, her heart pounding with excitement and fear. And finally, after hours, she arrived at the lake's edge. It was a beautiful sight. The water was still and clear, reflecting the bright blue sky above. But as Mia looked closer, she could see the telltale ripples that signaled the presence of crocodiles beneath the surface. 
For a moment, she hesitated. Was she really brave enough to do this? But then she remembered the thrill of adventure that had brought her here and knew she had to try. With a deep breath, Mia stepped into the water. The cool liquid enveloped her and she shivered with excitement. She began to swim, her movements slow and measured, her eyes fixed on the water around her. For a while, everything was calm, but then, without warning, something grabbed her leg. Mia screamed, the sound echoing across the water as she felt herself dragged into the depths. She struggled, kicking and flailing, trying to free herself from whatever held her, and then suddenly, she was free. She kicked her way to the surface, gasping for air, her heart pounding. As she looked around, she saw the crocodile that had attacked her. It was huge, its jaws wide open, its eyes fixed on her. Mia knew she had to get out of the water fast. She began to swim back to shore, her movements quick and frantic. But as she swam, she felt something brush against her leg. She looked down and saw the crocodile following her, its jaws snapping shut just inches from her skin. Mia swam faster, her heart racing. She could feel the crocodile closing in on her, its teeth gnashing, its breath hot on her heels. And then, suddenly, she felt a sharp pain in her shoulder. The crocodile had bitten her. Mia screamed, her voice ringing out across the water. But she kept swimming, her arms pumping furiously, her eyes fixed on the shore. She could see the trees looming closer and knew she was almost there. Finally, with energy, she made it to the shore. She scrambled onto the bank, her heart pounding, her body shaking with adrenaline. And then, with one last look at the water, she turned and ran. Mia spent the next few days in the hospital, recovering from her injuries. But despite the pain and the fear, she knew she had done something incredible. She had faced her fears and survived, and she knew she would never forget the thrill of that moment. And so, as she lay in her hospital bed, she remembered everything she went through just to free herself from the crocodile. Whenever she thinks of it, she feels proud and fearless to have faced such a crucial situation. Her family, especially her parents, have been so thankful for her bravery in facing a vicious predator that could have cost her her life if she didn't have enough guts to survive that day. Truly, Mia's life was forever changed because of this. Since childhood, Andres Polinski has had a deep-seated interest in reptiles, particularly crocodiles. He's widely regarded as one of the world's leading herpetologists, and he has devoted his entire life to researching these prehistoric animals and illuminating the mysteries surrounding their behavior. His most recent journey had taken him to the swamps of Mexico, where he hoped to better understand how crocodiles behave in their natural environment. Andres went very deep into the thick mangroves surrounding the swamp's murky waters, while Javier, his reliable guide, accompanied him. The level of humidity in the air was high, and the sounds of various birds and insects could be heard everywhere. The two individuals cautiously navigated the treacherous terrain while keeping a watchful eye on the edge of the water for any indication of crocodile activity. Andres's enthusiasm increased as they proceeded further into the swamp on their hike. He was resolute in his mission to make groundbreaking discoveries to shed light on these ancient reptiles' mysterious lives. Because Javier, an experienced local guide, had spent his entire life in these swamps, his knowledge was extremely helpful to the overall success of the expedition. Andres and Javier saw a massive crocodile lounging on the muddy bank one morning as the sun rose over the horizon and cast a golden hue on the water. The crocodile was seen by the two men. Its powerful jaws were partially submerged, showing off its sharp, gleaming teeth, which sent shivers down their spines. Andres got an excellent close-up look at the behavior of these creatures thanks to this wonderful opportunity. Andres cautiously approached the crocodile and maintained a safe distance while Javier stood by his side. He took the time to meticulously set up his equipment, intent on recording every single aspect of the creature's behavior. Because he was concentrating so intently on his work, he momentarily forgot about the risks in the swamp. 
The massive crocodile lunged forward all of a sudden without giving any prior warning, and its jaws closed with a force that was bone chilling. Andres had no more than a millisecond to respond to the situation. He could only escape the gaping jaws that appeared to be aimed at him by making a split-second decision to take a backward leap. However, his good fortune ran out when the sole of his foot landed on a rock covered in moss, which caused him to lose his footing and fall into the water below. The crocodile pounced on the chance instantly and took advantage of it. It let out a deafening roar before lunging at Andres and wrapping its strong jaws around his leg as it did so. Panic and excruciating pain coursed through Andres' body as the crocodile thrashed violently and dragged Andres further into the water. His thoughts were racing and his instincts for self-preservation kicked in. Andres mustered every ounce of strength he had left in order to reach for his camera bag and grab a nearby branch. He then began frantically stabbing at the crocodile's eyes to distract it. Javier reacted quickly after seeing the horrific attack play out before his eyes and began to intervene. With fearless determination, he dove headfirst into the water and struggled with the crocodile to free Andres from its hold. After what seemed like an eon of struggle, Javier eventually succeeded in prying open the crocodile's jaws and releasing Andres from the crocodile's deadly hold on him. Andres, injured and bleeding, was brought ashore by Javier, who immediately began providing first aid to him once he arrived. They successfully stopped Andres' bleeding and stabilized his injuries thanks to his guide's quick thinking and extensive knowledge of the swamp where they were working. Following a terrifying ordeal, Andres was transported by helicopter to a nearby hospital where he underwent several operations and then spent several months recovering. Andres managed to pull through the ordeal despite the psychological and physical damage it caused him. His dedication to the study of crocodiles remained unshaken, and he vowed to one day go back to the swamps to carry on his research. Andres's life was spared thanks to Javier's bravery and expertise, which resulted in the formation of an unbreakable bond between the two of them. Their story quickly spread throughout the scientific community motivating others to recognize the challenges and opportunities of studying the natural world. And as Andres continued to get better, he became even more resolved to figure out the complex behavior of crocodiles. He will be eternally grateful to Javier for saving his life and giving him a second chance at living. Thiago is a tour guide at Tarcolis River in Costa Rica and he's not just an ordinary tour guide. He guides tourists on boat tours through the river known as the most crocodile-infested river in the country. He's not just showing the tourists, but feeding the crocodiles they were passing by himself. Because of this, Thiago became well-known as the Crocodile Whisperer and became an icon of the Tarcolis River. Sometimes he would touch the crocodiles for too long, to show off to the tourists and repeatedly amaze them. Despite the dangers of interacting with crocodiles most every day as part of his job, Thiago loves to do it and is happy whenever people praise him for being brave toward one of the most dangerous apex predators of the wild. One day, three British students named Nellie, Darcy, and Ava came to Costa Rica to experience the Tarcolis River boat tours for themselves. They've been hearing about Thiago and how well he can handle crocodiles, so they became curious and eventually wanted to see him guide them through the crocodile-infested river. As they arrived at the river, they were lucky that only a few tourists came to experience the boat tours that day. They immediately booked a schedule and patiently waited for their turn. When it was their turn, they hopped into the boat and saw Thiago welcoming them. The girls all greeted Thiago as the tour guide smiled and greeted them back. He was nice to them and told them to relax and enjoy the boat ride. As the boat moved through the river, the girls took pictures and videos as Thiago gave them helpful information about the crocodiles living there. The girls asked if Thiago interacts with the crocodiles, and he said yes. Thiago found the perfect timing until he ordered the boat to stop near the riverbanks as he saw a crocodile resting there. 
there, Thiago grabs a piece of meat from a bucket he always brings to feed the crocodiles and gently steps out of the boat to walk through the muddy riverbanks and approach the crocodile resting near them. The girls were tense as they recorded a video with their handheld cameras while Thiago slowly approached the crocodile. The crocodile, aware of Thiago's presence, opened its eyes and slowly moved its body forward. Thiago waves the meat in his hand, attempting to get the crocodile's attention. The crocodile then sees the meat and immediately walks toward Thiago and using its two front limbs, lifts its head and upper body to reach for it. Thiago swiftly throws the meat into the animal's mouth and the girls were amazed. Nelly tells Thiago how amazed she is by his act and he asks the girls if they want him to interact with the crocodile even more. The girls agreed as Thiago grabbed a piece of meat again to feed the crocodile for the second time and then Thiago successfully feeds the crocodile again and even plays with it for a few seconds before he tells the girls they are going back since he might disturb other crocodiles nearby. As Thiago turned his back on the crocodile and began walking through the muddy riverbank, the girls suddenly started to scream, telling him to run. When Thiago turned his back, it was too late. The crocodile quickly bites him by the waist and starts dragging him into the riverbank, causing him to scream. The girls were screaming as they couldn't do anything to save Thiago. The tour guide was crying as he could feel the crocodile's teeth piercing his skin. He squirmed and tried to move his body to fight the crocodile by punching and smashing his fists on the animal's face. The crocodile then puts Thiago into a death roll, repeatedly biting and pouncing on his body. Thiago couldn't move since he's been badly hurt, and the girls could only scream in terror without knowing what to do with the situation. Thiago tried his best to push the crocodile away and fight it with his bare hands, but the crocodile still keeps biting him violently. With all the strength left in his weak body, Thiago puts his hands in the crocodile's mouth and tries to open the crocodile's jaws. He screamed as he could feel his muscles burning due to being worn out, but he wouldn't stop, and within a moment, he successfully pried the crocodile's jaws open and used the opportunity to run to the boat and escape with the three girls. Despite being injured and covered in blood, Thiago managed to maneuver the boat until they reached the riverbanks, and the girls got off the boat quickly and asked other tour guides for help. The tour guides were horrified when they saw Thiago and immediately took him to a hospital. After the attack, the Tarcolis River boat tours canceled their services temporarily as Thiago recovered at the hospital. Nelly, Darcy, and Ava are left with terrifying memories of the crocodile's attack on their tour guide rather than enjoying their experience at the river. Beatrice and Clark, an adventurous couple from Melbourne, Australia, set out on a fishing trip for the weekend to an uninhabited lake in the Northern Territory. They were thrilled at the prospect of discovering uncharted wilderness and the rush of reeling in rare fish species for the first time in their lives. They had no idea that the fishing trip they were going on would turn out to be a defining moment in their lives. Beatrice and Clark were filled with excitement as they readied their fishing gear to cast their lines into the placid lake as the sun began to rise. They launched their small boat and began gliding across the tranquil waters which exuded an inviting atmosphere. Eager to uncover the secrets of this hidden paradise, the couple couldn't contain their excitement to encounter the diverse array of animals living within it. They had no idea that a sly albino crocodile was hiding beneath the calm waters, waiting for its next meal. The locals call this elusive and dangerous beast Leviathan because it had evaded capture for so many years. Its ivory scales blended perfectly with the lake's sandy bottom, making it extremely difficult to spot. Beatrice and Clark cast their lines while concentrating on the thrill of the possibility of making a catch. They were both thrown off their feet when suddenly a powerful force rocked their boat, throwing them both off balance. Beatrice's leg was quickly engulfed by the monstrous jaws of the albino crocodile that had appeared out of nowhere. As the crocodile dragged her deeper into the water, her piercing screams of agony could be heard throughout the area. 
Clark, who was overcome with shock and adrenaline, responded immediately. He grabbed an oar nearby and began to pound the animal to free his beloved wife, who was being held captive. Beatrice's skin was pierced and her bones were broken as the crocodile's grip became increasingly tight. She was experiencing intolerable pain, but she had a strong will to live despite it. Beatrice mustered all her strength and fought back, tearing at the crocodile's eyes with her fingernails and hitting its snout with her fists. Her relentless determination unsettled the dangerous animal, causing it to momentarily release its grip on its prey. Seizing the opportunity, Clark dragged his wife onto the boat while she was still writhing in pain and bleeding heavily from the injured leg. The desperate nature of their fight attracted the attention of nearby fishermen, who immediately came to their assistance. They called the authorities and administered first aid immediately after the incident. Despite the excruciating pain, Beatrice remained conscious and clung to the possibility of a positive outcome. The strength of her resolve was an inspiration to everyone around her. After the news of the attack by the albino crocodile quickly spread throughout the area, a group of skilled crocodile hunters were dispatched to the area under the direction of the well-known wildlife expert, Dr. Olivia Robinson, to capture the dangerous animal. They searched the lake thoroughly, armed with tranquilizers and specialized equipment with the intention of bringing the crocodile responsible for the crime to justice. As the days turned into weeks, the hunters continued their pursuit of their objective. After a tense and exciting showdown, they found the albino crocodile in a remote part of the lake. They rendered the beast immobile by putting it to sleep, requiring expert precision. The once evasive leviathan had finally been brought into view. Beatrice and Clark both felt a sense of relief when they heard the news of the successful capture. Beatrice's unbreakable spirit remained unbroken even though she had been injured. She had to undergo several surgeries and a rigorous rehabilitation program for her wounds to heal. She pulled strength, love, and support from her husband, family, and friends throughout her recovery process. Beatrice's physical strength gradually returned enabling her to undergo the necessary rehabilitation so she could walk again with the aid of a prosthetic leg. Her tenacity served as an example to others, and she eventually became a metaphor for prevailing over adversity. The community came together to support her, holding fundraisers to help pay for her ongoing medical expenses, and sharing her story as an example of the bravery that can be found in people. The albino crocodile, on the other hand, found a new home in a wildlife sanctuary where it will be observed and studied in the future. As a result of its capture, valuable insights into the behavior of these elusive creatures were gained, which contributed to the advancement of scientific research and the protection of Australia's distinctive animal life. The fishing trip Beatrice and Clark had planned turned into a harrowing ordeal. However, their unwavering love for one another and determination enabled them to triumphantly overcome their challenges. They decided to start a new chapter in their lives together, and they will be eternally grateful to the community for their unwavering support and the miraculous fact that they survived. Benjamin and his son Neo had been planning their fishing trip for weeks. It was a father-son tradition that they cherished, and they were both excited to spend the day together on the lake. They packed their gear, loaded the boat, and set off early in the morning. The sun was just rising, and the water was calm and still. As they drifted along, Benjamin told Neo stories about his childhood, and Neo listened with wide-eyed wonder. They laughed and joked and enjoyed the peacefulness of the lake. It was a perfect day but their idyllic morning was suddenly interrupted when Benjamin noticed movement in the water nearby. At first, he thought it might be a fish, but as the movement got closer, he realized it was much bigger, something that made his heart race with fear. It was a crocodile, a massive prehistoric creature that Benjamin had never seen before in this lake. He grabbed the oars and started rowing back to shore as quickly as possible but it was too late. The crocodile lunged out of the water, jaws gaping wide, and clamped down on the side of their small fishing boat. 
Neo screamed in terror as the boat tipped precariously to one side. Benjamin tried to steady it with the oars, but the crocodile was too strong. It started to pull them both towards the water, and Benjamin knew they were in grave danger. He grabbed his son and shoved him towards the shore, shouting for him to run and get help. Neo stumbled and fell, but got back up and ran as fast as possible. Benjamin stayed behind, desperately fending off the crocodile with the oars. The struggle was intense. The crocodile thrashed and snapped, trying to pull Benjamin into the water. But he was determined to protect his son and fought back with all his strength. He hit the crocodile repeatedly with the oars, driving it back and preventing it from getting a better grip. But the crocodile was relentless. It was a fierce predator, and it wouldn't give up easily. Benjamin knew he had to come up with a new plan if he wanted to survive. He remembered the flare gun he had brought along for emergencies. It was a long shot, but he figured it was worth a try. He rummaged through his gear, found the gun, loaded it, and aimed it straight at the crocodile's head. The gun rang with a loud bang, and the crocodile recoiled in pain. It let go of the boat and sank beneath the water, disappearing from sight. Benjamin collapsed on the deck, gasping for air. He was bruised and battered, but he was alive. He looked towards the shore and saw Neo running towards him, followed by a group of concerned onlookers who had heard the commotion. They helped Benjamin and Neo back to shore, and they were both taken to the hospital for treatment. They were shaken and traumatized, but they were grateful to be alive. The news of their harrowing ordeal spread quickly, and soon they were being interviewed by reporters and hailed as heroes for their bravery. Benjamin tried to downplay his role, saying he was just trying to protect his son, but everyone knew he had risked his life to save them both. In the end, Benjamin and Neo emerged from their experience stronger and more resilient than ever before. They faced their fears head on and came out on top. They knew they had a bond that could never be broken, and they would always cherish the memories of their fishing trips together, no matter what obstacles they might face.